Homelander is one of the most iconic movie villains ever created. Whenever he appears on screen, tension instantly fills the air, and viewers are tormented by fear of what he might do next. There is something captivating about this character that gives him an edge over other villains like the Joker and Darth Vader. Today, we will explore what makes Homelander such a memorable and intimidating antagonist, and how writers create such frightening characters. I like to think about two types of conflict between heroes and villains. One type is when the balance of power between them is equal, while the other type is when there is a significant difference in power levels. For example, in the scene where Captain America fights Bucky the Winter Soldier, their skills are roughly equal, creating a fierce battle to determine who will win. This is in contrast to when Darth Vader lights his lightsaber, looking down on the frightened rebels, where there is a clear imbalance in power. Similarly, when the Homelander confronts other characters in the series, there is usually a sense of intimidation and fear. On the other hand, when Hans Lander, a German colonel, confronts a helpless French farmer, there is less uncertainty and less physical danger, but there is still a sense of unease due to the power imbalance. Hans Lander's character is much more intimidating than the Winter Soldier or other heroes, as there is a greater difference in their strength. When we see Iron Man and Captain America fighting, we sit on the edge of our seats, wondering who will come out on top. But when Homelander gets angry, we don't worry about who will win. The difference in their strength is so great that we know there will be no fight. Instead, we wonder about what the villain might do. After all, whatever he decides, he will do. Of course, when heroes and villains are equally matched, it can make for a great story. But if the villain has an advantage, things can get scary. We fear that the villain might win, like when Iron Man faces Thanos. It's when the villain is much stronger than the hero that he becomes truly terrifying. The idea that he could get what he wants and the main characters could die seems not only possible, but likely. And again, don't take this too literally. Yes, it could be due to laser eyes or super soldier abilities, but it could also be some other form of power. For example, a boss who fires an employee and ruins their life or a toxic relationship where the manipulator controls the partner's finances. However, one thing is certain. If your villain has less power than the hero, it will be difficult to make them scary. That's why we rarely see stories like that. How can we fear what the villain can do when the hero can easily stop them? But then again, Van Patchman is an exception. So even if an author goes against these rules, they can still tell a great story. The difference in power can help make villains look intimidating. But there's more to it than that. This is just one aspect of the larger picture. When we see Homelander on screen, we feel fear and anticipation for what he might do. However, Thanos is also a tremendously powerful character. But there are times when he's not as intimidating. For example, in the scene where he talks to Gamora about his plans for the Infinity War, both characters are arguably the most powerful in their universes. Yet, this scene isn't as intense as a typical Homelander appearance. Clearly, strength alone isn't everything. I think Thanos lacks the charisma and presence that makes characters like the Joker or Vader so memorable. His personality, including his love for Gamora, and his reluctance to kill without reason, is what sets him apart. Remember, we're talking about a villain who seeks to wipe out trillions of lives. Thanos only does evil in the name of what he believes is the highest good and only when he believes it is absolutely necessary. If you want to, you can try to punch Thanos in the face, but since your death would not help him achieve his ultimate goal, he will likely spare you. Despite his incredible power, Thanos is not as scary as other villains because he needs to explain his motives in every scene. If he does not explain them correctly, he will not scare us. Compare this scene with others where he faces Star-Lord or Doctor Strange. In those scenes, there is more suspense because Thanos meets all the criteria for being scary. He is strong, and these characters are standing in his way. The difference in strength between Thanos and the other villains is huge, but most importantly, they are standing in the way of his goal. This creates the possibility that something terrible could happen to them. But let's return to the idea of a villain that reliably scares audiences, like Homelander. All such villains need to do is appear on screen, and that's enough to excite the audience. Another important aspect is their evil stories. After all, even if an antagonist has strength and motivation, they may not seem very scary to us if they have never committed any terrible acts. For example, 
In many children's cartoons, a villain can be incredibly powerful with excellent motivation for doing evil. But it's hard to make audiences feel horror because they haven't actually done anything wrong yet. However, when we compare this to films like The Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal Lecter, we see a much more terrifying example. Hannibal's appearance and the way he's written are incredibly frightening, but what makes Hannibal even more frightening is his history of despicable and disgusting actions. Well, that's my opinion on what makes a villain scary today. I think it's crucial to get this right, so the rest of the video will just be a summary of that. The villain should be surrounded by mystery, even if we don't know everything about them. The audience shouldn't understand the character or be able to predict their actions. When the writer creates this sense of uncertainty around the character, in any form, that's when a villain is most scary. And I can say with certainty that Homelander possesses this quality. He keeps surprising us, and his ability to shock and surprise the audience repeatedly is a big part, maybe the most important part, of what makes him so scary. When he meets this blind superhero, everything seems to be going well. The man is happy to meet his idol, and the Homelander smiles back. We are watching a heartwarming scene with this character, but all illusions disappear in an instant. It evokes emotions in everyone, and is a great example of the surprise technique. If we had been watching something like a Tarantino-style escalation of tension in this scene, where the Homelander openly declares his hatred for disabled people and behaves ominously, we would have been able to predict this. However, the fact that we could not foresee this turn leads us to believe that the Homelander is truly unpredictable. He could kill anyone at any time for no apparent reason. We realize that he already hates ordinary heroes because they are weaker than him in this instance. But this guy is simply an insult to the eyes of Homelander. After all, he is disabled. And how could someone so weak dare to call themselves a hero and even try to join the Seven? He should know his place. This is what was going through Homelander's mind, because his very existence hurts Homelander's ego in the most painful way. But it's interesting to note that we learn about the motivation of the character after the action takes place, rather than before. Due to this, and also due to many other similar moments, when he kills so many people without any hesitation, the viewer is led to believe that he could potentially kill anyone. This leads us back to our third point, as we become increasingly aware of the extent of his evil capabilities. However, we have seen countless scenes where the Homelander engages in confrontations with others, where the thought instantly crosses our minds. Oh, he could hurt them, he could just kill them. And this thought frightens us. Perhaps there are other scenes that are even more intriguing to consider when writing frightening characters. One such scene is at the end of the second season, where the Homelander faces off against a SWAT team in his own home. And despite the fact that this scene uses all the appropriate elements, the difference in power between the characters is immense. The character has a history of doing evil and a motivation to do harm, so there is almost no suspense in this scene. Of course, at this point, the viewer is interested in what is happening on the screen, but compared to other scenes, this one makes us worry less. And yes, part of the reason for this is obvious. We just don't care about these characters. They are just faceless soldiers to us. However, I think the main reason lies in the fact that this scene doesn't seek to use all four points of the antagonist's criteria. The outcome of this scene is completely predictable, as if the antagonist is already angry because he was lured out of the house, and when he returns, his son is missing, and there's a SWAT team in the house instead. Then the Homelander simply closes the door calmly, and we immediately realize that all the unexpected guests in the house are already dead. There can be no doubt about it and knowing this takes away from the horror and tension that could have been present in the scene. I know this is an unusual comparison, but let's imagine a scenario where a person is sick with a persistent symptom that doesn't go away. If they knew exactly what was causing it, it would make it easier for them to deal with the illness, at least mentally. It would be better than not knowing the cause, even if the prognosis was bleak. After all, the worst thing in the world is not knowing what's going to happen or what will happen next. This scene didn't seem so scary because every detail was known and it was predictable that everyone would die. The author even skipped the fight and went straight to Homelander leaving the house covered in blood. But in order to understand why uncertainty is a terrifying thing and why an author should always ask themselves if they can add more suspense to their scenes, we must first understand that suspense and horror often go hand in hand. They are two sides of the same coin, 
if we define suspense in practical terms, it is essentially a question. Will something terrible happen or not? Will Private Ryan be saved? Will Woody and Bass be able to return home? Will the characters in Jurassic Park survive? The probability of a bad outcome changes throughout a scene or story, which means the level of suspense, and thus horror, is constantly rising and falling. In fact, this changing probability is what drives the plot forward. This is how I see it, at least. If suspense is primarily uncertainty, and if your villain always acts with malicious intent, then suddenly your villain is not so scary anymore. The intrigue has disappeared. Now, viewers can predict every move the antagonist will make. Because suspense is closely linked to horror, a predictable villain rarely creates horror. But how do you create a villain who is unpredictable? For example, how can you introduce uncertainty into his character? There are so many ways, in fact, that it would be impossible to list them all. A great and proven method is to create situations in which the villain's knowledge of key information is uncertain. If he knows it, it can lead to disaster. The audience's uncertainty about the antagonist's knowledge can create great tension. In the film Inglorious Bastards, this is precisely what happens with Hans Lande. The audience wonders whether someone will survive after his ego has been damaged. Another example of uncertainty is the outcome of a coin toss. Of course, this only works if you know what is at stake before you flip the coin. Another method that the author could use is to have the character do bad things, even if they don't have a good reason for it. While this could be an interesting approach, it could also go too far. For example, a character like Homelander may be exactly the type of villain who would do this, but if the villain kills his subordinates constantly, even for minor mistakes, it can become corny and lose its impact. In Return of the Jedi, there are several scenes where Darth Vader chokes his officers, but Lucas chose to leave only one, because it became clear that Vader was choking his subordinates like he brushed his teeth, which would be boring for the audience. Even the Homelander spares Ashley because, while she has annoyed him, she is too useful to him to kill. That is, the fact that villains kill their subordinates doesn't make them terrifying. It just exposes them as incompetent employers. So, you probably shouldn't kill your subordinates too often. The author needs to establish that if a villain has a reason for their actions, no matter how small or insignificant, someone showing them respect or saying the word no can lead to serious consequences. They should act seriously. Such antagonists are more like Homelander than Tannis. They just need to be in the scene, and everyone starts tiptoeing around them, trying not to anger them. When someone says something even slightly incorrect, the villain gives them a deadly look, and the tension increases. For example, Hans Lande is a frightening villain, but he doesn't have a trigger. He's a relatively calm and self-controlled guy, yet he's recognized as one of the most intimidating antagonists in cinema. Giving a character a volatile personality may seem optional, but it can be an effective way to make a villain more frightening. Oh, now I remember Eddie Redmond from Jupiter Ascending. The movie's creators made this mistake by giving him a personality that was too volatile. He screamed all the time, which made him seem more pathetic than scary. I think the main reason why this villain was so weak was because he was fickle and unpredictable. Because of this, he seemed incompetent and childish which made it hard not to laugh when he appeared on screen. Therefore, it's important to be careful when creating a character's personality. And although fickleness can be a useful trait for some villains, it doesn't always make them seem scary, and it can even create an undesirable impression of the character if taken too far. Another mistake that screenwriters often make when trying to create unexpected villains is to portray them as crazy. While it is possible to make characters appear insane, there is a problem with this approach, as the author may see their insanity as an excuse for them to do anything, act randomly, and commit the cardinal sin of drama, having a character with no motivation for their actions. Being angry on its own is not a good motivation, and it is not even considered a motivation at all. Fortunately, most writers avoid this mistake when creating crazy villains, although it is a common one that deserves mention. Even if a character is clinically insane, they will still have their own unique pathologies and will be consistent in their actions and motivations. Consider the Joker from The Dark Knight. He has a well-defined nihilistic philosophy that drives his actions. He's the type of person who just wants the world to burn, and that's his main motivation. Let's take a look at Old People Don't Belong Here. 
There is a chilling villain in this movie, and he's textbook psychopath. He's a selfish man who cares only about his own gain. The Coen brothers have accurately portrayed psychopathy in this film, and everything the character does is what a psychopath would do in real life. Javier Bardem's character is an unpredictable villain with serious mental disorders, but everything he does is motivated. Nothing is random. No Country for Old Men is a great example of how to bring insecurity into a villain's character, because when they have a mental disorder, they become more terrifying. They have their own unique pathology. But viewers don't fully understand exactly how this behavior works, which means we can never predict what they will do next. If we don't know how a character thinks, we can't accurately predict their actions, and this makes them even more frightening. The same advice applies to writing horror movies. For example, the scene in Aliens, when the Marines enter the alien nest, is alarming because it shows an aspect of the monster's life cycle that we had never seen before. While we know what the xenomorphs look like from the first movie, this scene is still terrifying because the audience realizes that they were wrong about understanding the monsters. Fear of the unknown is the most common fear of all, and experienced screenwriters will utilize it not only in horror films, but also in the creation of frightening antagonists, regardless of the genre. In fact, many film critics argue that it is best not to show the monster on screen because it will diminish the audience's fear. They suggest showing only a glimpse of the monster until the climax, when the full image is revealed. However, this approach seems counterintuitive to me. It is a flawed strategy that fails to consider the complex nature of fear. Consider a movie that many people consider the scariest they have ever seen. Although the monster is shown in full, it is used effectively because it creates a sense of uncertainty and mystery, rather than simply relying on the physical appearance of the creature. And this contradicts what some people might want you to believe. In short, the uncertainty in villains can be terrifying, but inconsistency should always be avoided. The whole idea of unpredictability is an important lesson we can learn from the Homelander's character. And now, let's answer the question. Why is the Homelander scarier than other villains? What makes him so unique? Well, first of all, he fits every single description that was mentioned in this video. However, behind his mask, there's something more. It's not just that he enjoys mass murder, as there are plenty of fictional characters who do too. There are many characters in literature that are also comfortable with this. What makes him so terrifying is that he has an incredible desire not to engage in such activities. He is a narcissist who is incredibly concerned about how others perceive him. He enjoys killing people because it reinforces his belief that he is superior to them. He also enjoys exercising power by harming others because it strengthens his belief that he really is the perfect being on Earth. However, he also desires to be loved, and perhaps even more so than killing. If he indulged too much in this first love, it would destroy his public image, which he values more than anything else in the world. This is all narcissistic, but these two aspects of his personality compete with each other like yin and yang, and his two motivations fight each other endlessly maximizing the dramatic potential of his character, because we never know which side will win in the end. Perhaps at some point in the future, Homelander will completely abandon his attempts to be loved and become a tyrant that everyone fears. This could happen at some point, but the creators should try their best to delay it as long as possible until the last season of The Boys, in order to maintain the current status quo of Homelander for as long as they can. If the show continues on the path where Homelander tries to take over the world, it would make him a less intriguing villain. This is because he would lose his two main motivations, to be loved and to be feared. This doesn't mean he would suddenly become a boring character, but it would lead to the disappearance of the fine balance between his desires. Instead, he would have only two motivations, to kill those who don't like him and to inspire fear, and these would feed off each other making him more predictable. Which means that the scenes in which he appears would be a lot less frightening because of this. This is another important conclusion we can draw about the character of the Homelander. A character with multiple conflicting motivations is inherently more interesting than one with only one, even if they are the main character. If some of these motivations are good and others are bad, and they cannot be fulfilled at the same time, this results in uncertainty about what the character will do. This unpredictability makes the story more interesting. In contrast, 
If a character has only one motivation, regardless of how bad it is, there is less uncertainty about their actions.